Chryso, Difta, Benachtin, Gia Huich, Fulcher, Daymat. Welcome, welcome to the Celtic Myths and Legends podcast. I am your humble host, Sean Esther Powell, and I'm going to be taking you on a journey through all the myths and legends of the six Celtic nations. That's Wales, Cornwall, Brittany, Isle of Man, Scotland and Ireland. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. I was told to add a third one. <laughs> it was a really lovely email. <laughs> but they were just like, you said welcome twice. The, the rule of three, you have to say it thrice. So welcome, welcome, welcome. What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? Okay, that's the giggly bit over and done with, guys. That is the laughter Full stop underneath that laugh. Underneath, next to, beside, afterwards. Afterwards that laughter and then it shall go on to yourself. <laughs> I'm losing the plot. This is going to be a spooky one. This is going to be a really horrifying, terrifying, disgusting, visceral, horrible episode. So I'm glad we got the giggles over and done with, guys, because from now on it's just terror, misery and pain. Okay. So I hope you're ready for that. We are, of course, back to Scotland. Those of you who have listened to the podcast before will know that each of the episodes we focus on one of the six Celtic nations. But next year, I'm going to also add Glycia and Asturias. And I know I'm pronouncing those wrong, so someone tell me how to pronounce them. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we are back to Scotland today. And um, it's winter it's November. I I was clinging on to autumn with both hands. I have been so adamant that it's still autumn. I'm like, November is autumn. November is firmly autumn. I will not hear another word said against my autumn Delulu fantasies. Okay, but then it started snowing today in Cornwall. So um, whilst I was on my, my snow-ridden walk with the dog, I realised maybe winter has cometh. Maybe winter is right here, baby. So uh, let's talk about a spooky winter creature from Scotland or specifically from the Orkney Islands. This is a piece of Orcadian mythology. And that is, of course, you shouldn't name it, uh, but I will, because obviously I just I just welcome the looming spectre of death. <laughs> I don't really. I'm, I'm a vibrant woman. I... <laughs> We're talking about the knuckle of V. I am just obviously not in the right headspace to be talking about like a, basically a horror episode. This is a horror episode. I try to make my episodes as child friendly as possible. And whilst I'm not gonna swear, I'm not gonna get too like graphic or anything. Um, it's pretty gross. Like I'm gonna give you a physical description of the monster and it's pretty gross, it's pretty gnarly. So if you've got, if you're squeamish yourself or you're listening with your children or they're squeamish, then um, maybe pause here. But if they love the, the blood and guts and the monsters, then I, I, I welcome them to listen. <laughs> Okay, the knuckle of V. What on earth is the knuckle of V? The knuckle of V is a horrifying creature bound in the spring and summer months by a powerful deity, the sea mither, or mither or the sea. The knuckle of V is a giant creature, large head, too small for its thin neck. Its skinless body, oozing black blood, veins ever present, conjoined to the body of a giant skinless horse, its own head bearing one red eye. From a distance, this creature looks like some kind of rider, but then you realise the rider has no legs, only long dragging arms, with huge clawed hands dragging beneath the body of a horse. Were you to get close enough to this beast without it seeing you, you would smell the most hideous, rotting flesh. 
its head gaping mouth wide, tongue lolling out, black toxious fumes emanating from its mouth. But really, if you were to see such a creature, your luck is sure to run out. You better hope and pray for rain, for the only weakness this creature has is of fresh water. That or a fresh water stream or lake or river, for it cannot cross that threshold. Catch the ire of this creature by burning seaweed or just straying too close to the beach in the dead of winter. Never say the name of the beast for it takes great offence to being named and it will find you. I think I'm safe because I am in Cornwall, but Cornwall is also a sea peninsula, so. <laughs> but I do really want to go to Scotland. Like, I am hungering to be in the northern region right now. Hungering? That's, I, <laughs> that's not the right word, is it? Anyway, I, I, I want to go to Scotland if, 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 if it wants to come to Cornwall, then I'll just hitch a ride. I'll just hitch a ride. In the winter, its aching bones long to stretch, long to hunt, stiff from its prison during spring and summer. The only creature strong enough to bind the knuckle of V is the mither or the sea. Now, who is the sea mither or mither or the sea? By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed that my voice is like, extra husky tonight <laughs> you're welcome it has in fact not recovered since the weekend where i sang an inordinate uh, amount of shanties at the top of my lungs in a very crowded pub many crowded pubs many shanties not many lungs unfortunately only the two that's right isn't it you do have two lungs don't you i'm not a doctor so who is Mither of the Sea? She is a sort of um, anthropomorphized version of the, the ocean, um, but really of spring and of summer. So it is she that creates the beautiful spring breeze. It's she that creates life in the oceans. I don't know, blessing all of the animals so they can get, get it on with one another and create offspring. She makes the oceans warm. She brings all the loveliness of the spring and summer. But while she is doing it, she is also battling some horrifying personification of, you know, thunder and storms and winter and all that's frightening and dark and untamed and wild about the ocean. And that is Terran, which is derived from Orcadian dialect, meaning furious anger so um yeah pretty pleasant chap i was trying to think of like some actually good title for the episode for once and i was like a mither of life and death but i don't think that will work and basically a matter of life and death is just one of my absolute favorite it's second my second favorite film other than blade runner um and i just wanted to shoehorn in that title but i don't think it will work but i wanted to tell you guys anyway so you can admire my excellent film taste and also i am obsessed lately with Powell and Pressburgers, I know where I'm going, which actually is quite relevant to this episode. Well, not really, but it is set in Scotland and it is set in a fictional Scottish island and it does have a frightening whirlpool, which and connected to, you know, lots of folklore and myths and legends. So I think that you should all hop on to Amazon Prime or whatever screaming, screaming, <laughs> whatever screaming service you use. Um, and you said you should search for I Know Where I'm Going by Powell and Pressburger because it's a, a delightful film, a beautiful, wonderful, magnificent film. And I didn't watch it three times in one week. Maybe I did. Maybe it was two weeks, three, three times in two weeks. That is a respectable amount of times to watch the same film. OK, thank you. But A Mither and Life and Death does capture the fact that it really is like this a kind of primordial, massive battle between these two forces, between the Sea Mither and between Terran. They are constantly battling it out. So, as I said, in spring and summer, the Sea Mither is winning out. She's holding Terran at bay and she's also holding the Knuckle of V at bay. Now, I don't quite know how the Knuckle of V you know, factors in to this story. If he's like 
the son of Terran or what is going on there? That is some weird dysfunctional family if it is like their son. Could you imagine? <gasps> oh my God. Anyway, ancient folklore scandal. Um, but the sea mother is holding these great primordial evil forces at bay, right? During the spring and summer. But her strength is bound to weaken. And it does when it hits autumn, when it gets to the, the, the latter half of the year, the darker months, when it gets to that autumn and winter time, her strength wanes. And for a short period of time, Terran wins out. And the knuckle of V is let loose to terrorise the poor uh, Orcadian folk especially if they burn seaweed. It does not like burning seaweed, by the way. And this is actually quite a fun tidbit for why that has probably found its way into the myths and legends. So seaweed burning started to, to happen um, in the 18th century, the sort of early 18th century. And the reason that you would burn seaweed is that it would produce something called soda ash, which was an alkali that was mainly used to treat acidic soil. And it then became a pretty key ingredient in soap and in glass and other things as well. But it emitted this like very strong smell. And it was the smell that was said to really enrage the knuckle of V. So the smell of this burnt seaweed to create this soda ash just absolutely had the knuckle of V in hysterics. He was not happy, not pleased. So the knuckle of V is not only a giant, skinless, horrifying, murderous creature that will chase you around, running behind you like the monster from the ritual until you get to a freshwater lake. No, it is also capable of causing blights, causing plagues, wilting crops, basically just being an all-round terror. But where do we get these horrifying descriptions from. There was an islander called Tamas who was said to have had a first-hand account with the knuckle of V. Now he obviously, he survived to tell the tale, he came up close to this creature and is the first, or the I think the only first-hand account, the first and last, thank goodness for that. I hope I won't be the second. <laughs> After how many times I have now said knuckle of V. Now it was according to Tamas that the the kind of the head, the man's head and the man's torso or the sort of humanoid type head and torso um, was attached to the back of a horse's body as if it were a rider but without any legs. So it's just one conjoined visceral, you know, blood pumping uh, skinless horror. Uh, very, very creepy. Now, although the kind of humanoid creature as part of the horse doesn't have any legs, as I mentioned, it does have long arms that can just, just drag uh, a along the floor as it's walking. Um, and on the, the horse's body, um, the legs have like fins on them as well. So that kind of water horse aspect. Now in his account, the actual, the head is about three foot in diameter and it is constantly just, just rolling rolling on its tiny thin neck. Well, I say tiny thin, it's a giant, but it's tiny thin compared to a, you know, a three foot in diameter head. And that being the, the humanoid type head, because the horse head, um, that is the one that's said to have, um, you know, this one glaring red eye. The creature has no skin. It's just flesh. It's just flesh there, black, blood you can just see the veins you can see all of the the yellow skin its sinews ugh. you know its blood pumping and pulsating across its pale flesh so these accounts from tamas were taken by walter trail dennison who was um from the orkney island of sanday um, now he was a farmer and a folklorist and he collected up a bunch of tales of the myths and legends um, of the Orkney Islands. A lot of these stories are actually in um, the a lot of these stories are actually in the Orcadian dialect and he collected them up underneath the title the Orcadian sketchbook. 
Now, with many other folklorists, he collected up his stories um, from simply the traditional tales that were told in Orkney. Um, and of course, like all other folklorists, probably embellished them a little bit, probably romanticised them a little bit. Um, you know, he, he would have, we all storytellers, we tell these stories in different ways. Um, me, I'm kind of relying on stories that have been collected by other folklorists. But I would love, do you know what, I'd love to go on Shan's Celtic Odyssey. It is literally a dream of mine. It's literally a dream of mine to travel the six Celtic nations and actually um, collect some myths and legends myself. I should practice in Cornwall actually I should actually go around and ask people about myths and legends but it seems to be dying out that people don't seem to remember um, stories so much anymore which is which is pretty sad I'll just have to write my own and then other folklorists can tell people about my stories one day <laughs> but like all folklorists he was um, you know collecting these stories from as traditional stories and also kind of um, putting them pen to paper but embellishing them a little bit, you know, in influencing the stories in, 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 you know, some sort of way. And he was probably quite adept at collecting these stories because he himself was local to the islands and he was a farmer. So he was a sort of working everyday man. So he was probably able to collect certain types of stories um, in a way that some maybe upper class folklorists might not have been. And these might have been stories that he himself was told um, as a young man growing up and I think he, he very much claimed that his stories were coming from the, the real people of Orkney they were coming from the peasantry of, of Orkney but it's Walter Trail Denison's collecting of the story and especially Tamas's recollection of his survival um, against the creature which is our main source of information for the physical description of the creature as well as some of its other attributes. The particularly interesting thing about the the knuckle of fee is that um, because of the, the Scandinavian influence on the Orkney Islands and on the the, um, the Northern Islands of Scotland, um, it could be a creature that's influenced by both Celtic mythology and also Scandinavian mythology as well. So it's almost like a merging of the kind of traditional Celtic Scottish water horse and other malevolent water spirits that um, existed in in. Norse mythology and it is potentially the nastiest creature in fact Catherine Briggs did call it the nastiest um, of the creatures and I think of all the creatures that I've covered it's probably the most uh, I mean the Doolahan the the Irish headless horseman if you guys haven't listened to my episode yet on that then you definitely should I, I definitely have done an episode on that I don't think I'm spoiling anything anyway there's a headless horseman in Irish mythology called the Doolahan but I think I've talked about it before. That one's pretty gross. That one's pretty nasty. And he does swing around um, a spine as a whip. But I think even even he, I don't know. I just feel like the knuckle of V is, is even more horrifying than that. I mean, it's just, it's just a giant skinless, horrible, melded body horror freak show. I mean, ah, it's gross. It's really gross. So the name itself, Nakalavi, seems to derive again from Orcadian dialect, meaning the devil of the sea. So if that doesn't say it all, then I don't know what does. The devil of the sea. How can you get nastier than the devil? So really, not much at all is known of Terran, who seems to be the 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 mortal enemy of the Mither of the Sea. Um, I can't find very many descriptions of him. At all. I'm saying him, it might not even be a him, it, whatever, um, but I can't see any descriptions of, of Terran, um, but that is the kind of the, the locked in immortal nemesis of the sea mither and the knuckle of E seems to be some sort of weird byproduct of her holding Terran at bay seems to also hold the knuckle of E at bay as well, which doesn't seem to be purposefully fighting against the knuckle of V in the same way. Isn't that the most glorious, gorgeous imagery there? You've got this, this, you know, this primordial battle between these two forces, one that represents the stor the raging storms that happen around the Orkney Islands, the rough seas, 
the horror, the terror, the wild nature of the ocean. And then the the spring and summer months, the the representing the calm waters, the spring breeze, the smell of the flowers in the air, like all the beautiful calm waters around the Orkney Islands during her reign. And she's casting Terran down to the depths of the ocean and holding him there in prisoner um, as she also creates all these benevolent lovely things in, during the spring and summer months I just think what a cool mental image I'm not an artist if anyone's an artist please draw that because that would be a badass so it's hard to really know the actual significance of her um, but it seems that she was some seen as some kind of um, pseudo deity because fishermen would kind of uh, leave offerings or kind of pray to the sea mither to afford them good passage and to protect them from the devil of the sea and they really are representing um you know forces of nature because the spirits themselves you know they can't be seen by human beings you can you can hear the the screams of terran on the howling winds during a storm you can feel the storms you can see the storms and the storms happening between them both as they're fighting it out but you can't actually see her or see terran you can't see these two beings physically fighting it out simply the forces of nature that they are representing so when she's fighting terran we know that she's casting him down to the depths of the ocean and holding him prisoner there but when he finally tires her or she exhausts herself through her efforts to keep him at bay um, we don't know where she resides to it might be that she has a special hiding place that she kind of resorts to when uh, her strength has completely waned only to, to come back during mid-march um, strong refreshed and ready to wrestle control from him once again again and take her place protecting the people of the Orkney Islands and it's a really beautiful example of weather folklore really and how um, the weather systems weather phenomena the seasons um, our geography all of these have our landscape of course all of these have a real impact on the myths and legends and stories that we tell one another um, folklore as I've said many 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 times before takes on many guises folklore can be a way of um, survival tips right folklore can be purely entertainment value but folklore can also be uh, a warning to heed to make sure that you stay safe and of course heeding the warning not to be um, swimming in the sea or taking rides out when the sea is broiling and wild and untamable and there's a storm happening is probably pretty pretty good advice actually so i hope that you enjoyed that episode uh, it's a really fascinating bit of folklore there from the Orkney Islands. Um, I've spoken about the Knuckle of E many times before um, in talks and um, on TikTok, I think, and other things, because it's it's such, oh, it's such a creepy, horrible creature. And it's a really great spooky, spooky creature as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for listening. I have all of my topics planned for the next uh, year. I cannot believe how productive I've been. I've got a whole spreadsheet with all of my topics that I'm going to do for 2024. But that doesn't mean that I'm not open to suggestions. So if you've got a topic that you're really interested in, please let me know and I can always shift things around or or do bonus episodes who who knows i don't know but we 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 move we move um i want to say a big thank you to some new patro patrons patrons on patreon um and that's tiffany that's naimu i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong caroline um and greg thank you so much uh it's so appreciated like i said these episodes are totally free i'm not expecting anyone to financially support me but it's re it, it does help me it's really great and it does help me move closer and closer to the dream of one day um being able to be um either free either partly freelance or completely freelance where i can 
one day hopefully make YouTube videos, other content videos, do talks, do all sorts of things, write books. I'd love to write a bunch of books on a lot of the myths and legends that I'm talking about. Um, so one day in the future, slowly and surely, slowly and surely i'm getting there guys um so a massive massive thank you to those patrons there um and if you do want to become a patron please do i'm going to start i think in the new year i'm going to start doing um little chats over there like little video calls and I, I haven't figured out how we're going to do it yet but people seem up for that people seem keen to do that so um yeah i'm going to start doing like just little video calls where we can kind of i guess meet each other and say hello and do like a little story share. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. But I think that it will be fun because I seem to have cultivated a really lovely um, community of listeners. And if you haven't looked at your Spotify Unwrapped yet, then please do and see if I'm one of your top five podcasts. I would be delighted and honoured if I was. I've already been tagged in a few people who have said that I am in their top five or I'm their number one which is just very, I just love it. That's very, very cool. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. And I will see you again, I suppose, after Christmas. So, oh my goodness, that was my phone beeping because I'm a very uh, popular person, obviously. <laughs> I hope you all have a really lovely Christmas or holiday season, whatever you practice, whatever holidays you um, you observe. I hope you have a lovely season. And if it's a really difficult season for you, if the holidays are really difficult, I hope that you get through them as painlessly as possible. And um, I'll be there at the end of it to, to tell you another story at the end of December. Thank you ever so much, everyone. And um, talk to you then. Bye. So I'm really sorry, guys. You've probably could tell I've had loads of audio issues that this is really loud so i really hope that i haven't spooked too much of you ah, and i'll have the audio issues um under control by the next episode ah. i am your host sean esther powell and that has been another episode of the celtic myths and legends podcast if you would like to find it elsewhere on the interwebs you can also find me on twitter at celtic myths pod on facebook under celtic myths and legends podcast on patreon at celtic myths pod as well as instagram at celtic underscore shan and also celtic shan.co.uk thank you muraz dioch tach palette guramagat trigare Go to my head. Thank you, and speak to you next time. Thank you.